I'm Rob Liguria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Alex Kurtzman and Jenny Lamette, creators of The Man Who Fell to Earth on Showtime. They also, you know, happen to be creators of this other amazing show called Star Trek Strange New Worlds, but we're, we're focusing on Man Who Fell to Earth for the time being. Guys, this is not a remake or a reboot of the 1976 Bowie classic. We all know it. We've all lived, we love, everyone loves that movie. It's a continuation of the story, which I, I didn't realise when I first got into it. And you capture the spirit of the original film, but you take it in new and very unexpected directions, which I really love. So why was this material, Alex, ripe for a revisit all these decades later? I mean, unfortunately, the truth is that that story is uh, timeless. You don't want it to be timeless, but it is. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because we seem to be making the same errors and judgment over and over and over again. And the things that Tevis was writing about, you know, and then what Rogue was, you know, interpreted with his film are still things that we're wrestling with today. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we are perhaps closer than any of those iterations to that storyline being a reality now um, in terms of where we are in our planet. So it felt like a particularly necessary time to tell the story. That being said, when we set out to do it, Jenny and I were not, we were not necessarily thinking that way. <laughs> I, we're not that smart, man, nor that altruistic. <laughs> I think we both came at it from very weird personal and instinctual places. Um, uh, and we kind of said yes before we really knew what kind of hell we were unleashing upon ourselves. Um, the story revealed itself in this incredible, it's a process like no other, and it took a long time to think, to write this. And it was more as if it revealed itself. I thought that we were somehow writing a show, a family show that was sci-fi adjacent which kind of turned out to be true, but without the sci-fi part, the family, the, fa the sci-fi part somehow illuminates the family element. Um, I, can, I can say that it surprised us both as we were writing it. We're like, oh shit, did that just happen? And we were writing it. Like, Wait, did we just say that? Um, yeah. We knew that we wanted to, you know, if you talk about a movie that is beloved, and you talk about a director and certainly a cast and that particular actor who are beloved. We knew the last thing that we could ever do was chase that experience because I would kick my own ass if I'm allowed to say that, if I did that. Um, so what we thought we could might be able to do, we thought we might be able to, to write with the curiosity and maybe try to approach the bravery of those artists in that we, when it, we tried to be as honest with ourselves as possible and writers are full of shit, you know, 85% of the time, like a solid 85% of the time. So that this, whenever we felt clever, whenever we felt like we were speaking about something very high-minded, we're like, oh, well, we're full of shit. And we would, and you know, we would check it out. Um, but Alex has a, Alex articulated it beautifully. Um, so I'll do it for him now. Alex articulated it beautifully <laughs> about what we were going through um, and what we were trying to make sense of while we were writing this. Alex? Um, I think that we were looking around at the world and understanding it less and less. We were seeing the divisions between everybody across the board. We were seeing the ways in which um, we've never been more connected and yet never further apart. And, and we're, we're both parents. Like we're both same. think a lot about it. Yeah. You yeah. can think about our kids, maybe, you know, 25 hours a day, like every other parent. And there's this thing that's happened that's infected us like a virus, which is that there does not seem to be a voice of reason anymore. That's pointing us in a direction that's actually about real communication or real understanding that's forcing us to look at our choices in a non-reactionary way, but just in a basic sort of humanistic way. And I think we, the opportunity of, of getting to write Faraday was getting to write a character who was coming in and who was seeing things just elementally. He was very unclouded by the noise that we live by and was just calling it out as he sees it. You know, you, you believe you are communicating with each other, but you're not, you exist only within yourselves. You know, the, the great illusion 
on this planet, you know, is that communication is actually taking place. It's not, you know, those are the, those are the observations that he's making. And he, he really does call out how and why that is the case. And, you know, he does it in a very funny way. The last thing that we wanted to do is write a show that was wagging a finger at anybody or making you feel like you're eating your vegetables. And I think humor for us, yeah. humor and unpredictability were the two things that were sort of, I think, our secret formula, at least in, if we tried um, to, to make a show that you just couldn't stay ahead of. I, as, as viewers, the shows that we love the most are the ones where you just go, I have no idea where this is going. I can't, it's not adhering to a, a, a sort of a, a structure that I that's familiar to me. And yet there's something about it that is completely compelling. And that is really what we what we wanted to do. Yeah, um, I couldn't have said it better myself, but this is, there's a sense of urgency with what this show is about. And yet there's nothing about it that is take your medicine at all. And I, I don't even know how to describe it to people because I have no idea what's gonna happen. Um, it opens on this TED talk type scenario and then goes back where Faraday is almost childlike looking at us and saying, what on, what on earth are you doing? Pun intended. <laughs> and then we go on this journey. It's so, it's really profoundly, it's, it's a thought provoking show. And then of course, episode three happens with Rob Delaney, who I just adore. He brings a completely new energy to it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm just wondering, like, you can't spoil what's going to happen at the end, but what do you want to achieve with the man who fell to earth? What are you hoping that you will get audiences to take away from it when all is said and done? Um, you know, there are a couple of different answers. There, there are a myriad of different answers to that question. And really depending on when you ask me, because in the very beginning, I thought of, I was writing one thing about one thing. I thought I was writing about what, a very, I thought I was writing a, a story. When you have, um, I experienced a couple of years ago before COVID, a big family loss. I lost um, like four people in the space of a year. And, and the planet, I didn't know where I was. I like, I didn't, the landscape felt completely different. I was sort of, I was discombobulated. And so I was like, oh, okay, I think that I'm writing my way through that. I'm writing my way through that. And then there was the isolation of COVID. And I thought, okay, maybe I'm writing my way through this and I'm worried about my children. And, and then recently I began thinking about, and this comes back to what do I want today at this moment? What would I love for people to take away? I'm a single mom. My mom was a single mom for quite a while. My grandmother was a single mother and her mother was a single mother. Wow. The character of Justin. So yeah, we have a hundred years of single mother in my family. Um, the character of Justin, I firmly believe that single moms save the world. Uh, um, and I think my mom lives with me now, she's 84. I don't know, there's something about saying thank you to single, I'm not gonna say single mom, I'm gonna say single parents. Um, for me personally, the single women who took care of me and got me here. Um, on a broader spectrum, I'm gonna say the single folk, the yeah. people who take care of other people, just especially now when the world seems so fucking weird and you don't know really who to listen to, the people who are within, take care of the people who are within arm's reach, I think, is probably what I would say. Wow. Alex, what about you? Um, I, I guess that I feel like the shows that I connect to the most are the ones that, that create an emotionally immersive place for me where I just disappear into the world, the world and the characters. And the, the danger of shows that involve science fiction is that you can often um, dazzle people with visuals, but at the end of the day, that's not enough, right? Technology has is, is, is progressed to a place now where you could come up with any image in the world and put it, and no one's really that impressed anymore. So what, but, but it is impressive when you hook an audience into a character or a series of characters and you fall totally in love with them, even when they're the villain. And I think that what we really wanted to do in this particular show was create a series of characters you could fall in love with, even if you love to hate them. Yeah. 
-hmm. as we did with Spencer Clay and as we did with Drew Finch, you know, played by Jimmy Simpson and Kate Mulgrew, who are the sweetest people ever in the history of the world, even though they're playing terrible people. But um, but also to, to, as I said, create a journey where we're writing about the intersection between our humanity, religion, science, the noise that we create in social media and what it turns us into for good and for bad. And, and ultimately, all of that is filtered down through the story of these families. You know, you have the flood family on one side, very complicated between Edie and Hatch and the legacy of their father and the company that literally was stolen from Thomas Newton. And then you have Justin's family, the, the Falls, Falls family. family. Alex, and- can I just say one thing? Inter- I know I'm a total asshole. I interrupt him all. <laughs> you know, I, I just it. realized we named our families after things that water does. Yeah. I and- didn't know that. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, I didn't know that until right now. And disaster wow. falls of blood. <laughs> Did you know that? I well, thought that was intentional. I, I, I had no idea. Did you know that? I, I had not made the water connection, but we sort of fall, falls and floods are, are you know, uh, also disasters. So. <laughs> yeah, but they're, but, but they're very positive and beautiful. Yeah. I really, see, this is the thing about the show, and I swear to God, I wish I was being, and I'm sorry I interrupted you. It is a gift. I mean, it, it, you're right. It, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to realize something like that. And then I realize, no idea. oh yeah, we're, of I'm course, not. water. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, like, I'm a sci-fi nut, okay? And we talked offline about how I'm a huge Star Trek fan, Star Wars, everything, Battlestar Galactica, you name it, I'm there. Sure. This, that was my in for this. I'm like, well, I want to see an alien. I want to see what they're going to do with this Bowie thing, right? And I don't, honestly, it's not why I'm so addicted to it. It's because I care about these people. I really mm-hmm. honestly do. Faraday and Justin, I care about them. And now obviously the, the Hatch thing, but I want to ask you something because- um, when it comes to the two crazy bonkers characters played by Jimmy and Kate, um, I remember I don't usually get dazzled by dialogue scenes these days. I'm a bit jaded. I have to watch so much content. And when they're in that, in the when we first meet them in the diner, I was beside myself. What, <laughs> what on earth? Who are these people? Are we going to get? Are we going to get to the bottom of that by the end? Like, why yeah. are they so insane? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you will, you will. But that scene is. It's, I'm so uh, grateful uh, that you said that because that scene does like what my favorite scenes do, which is, you know, it's, it starts in one place and ends like in a place where like, how did you get there? You know, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that, that, I mean, to me, that's like the great benefit of streaming television right now. But the, the, the fun of shooting that scene, it was so strange too, because I ended up getting COVID while we were shooting and I couldn't, and it was two days from rap. And I had those two scenes. So I came, I was in my study directing that scene from my computer, Yeah, which was a real first for me. Like I had never, there were two scenes that I directed between them from my computer and that was one of them. And I had rehearsed it with them and I had planned all the shots with my DP. So that was good. You know, I, I was able to do it. But what was so fun about that scene was that Jimmy seems like the sweetest guy in the world at the beginning of the scene. He's like, oh, hi. You know, he's got this like tone with her. And then you realize halfway through the scene, oh my God, he's a total monster and she's enjoying it. And they're just, they're, they're out to kill this poor waitress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like poor Daisy. Yeah. Poor I know. Daisy. Yeah. Waitress. I know. I, it's such a random thing to talk about because there's so much we could be focusing on, but it's just emblematic of what you do on this show. And like, yeah. I'm an Aussie. We say the C word like it's the yeah. And uh, Americans perhaps are not as accustomed no. to hearing no. the C-U-N-T, but when Kate Mulgrew's character says, you'll be as old as me when yeah. the C-U-N-T yeah. brings you profiterol, I was screaming. Like, it's just <laughs> perfection. perfection. So um, we don't have a lot of time. I want to talk more about now you're shepherding, you know, the Star Trek franchise into the future, which is, I, I would say, a huge honour for writers and producers like yourselves. And you had a hand in pretty much shepherding the whole of the man who fell to earth together. Mm-hmm. What is it about each other? What do you value about collaborating, working with each other? You're going to get super soppy now, but Jenny, you tell me like, what, why do you, why is this team so good? Well, look, there's usually, sometimes I get a question in this neighborhood and I say something really snarky 
Like he's a nerd <laughs> and I'm really cool and I make him cooler, which is true. Yeah. Um, we laugh all the time. Um, I'm going to amend that. We laugh all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a lot of our time set, <clears throat> torturing each other and sending each other cat memes. We were probably brother and sister in a former life. He was my incredibly annoying younger brother who like sat next to me in the car and went, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Who is that guy? Um, I think we are in... <sighs> It's so hard to say this stuff without sounding like an asshole. Yeah. The magic part of Alex is that if you um, if you have a ball of yarn and you sort of swat the ball of yarn, it unravels, right? And you see this one, and you see what the yarn, what the ball of yarn is made of. Um, and that's Alex with structure, and it's freakish. And I've also seen him when we speak, because he always has 450 shows going on and he'll just jump from track to track from yarn ball to yarn ball in his head. So it's really some, it's really, and mostly when I first met him, I was like, it was almost anthropological. I'm like, oh, what a freakish thing. Maybe I'll, like, <laughs> what, what, what? I don't know, man. We both think human beings are really beautiful and funny. And we are, I think we both root for them. Because most of the time human beings are, this is the thing they want and this is the human being, go that way, you know? We, <laughs> um, Alex, I, don't, I think that's right. I think I'm a human yeah. and so are you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Jenny, Jenny paints extraordinary rainbows when it comes to dialogue. You know, that dialogue you're talking about, that's, that's very largely Jenny in that scene. And um, I, I know that, we like we'll have these we, we we have there's so much joy in the process right like there's joy in banging our heads against the wall there's joy in talking through it there's joy in you know we, there's a ton of laughter all day long and then we'll have landed on, okay so this scene should be about this J jenny will take a pass at it she'll send it back to me and it, it will be what we talked about but not at all the way we talked about it like it, it'll come out from a from just left field in a way that's totally surprising and unexpected. And then I'll take a pass and send it back and forth. And we go back and forth and back and forth through thousands of drafts of the scenes. And there's so much trust between us, mm -hmm. like that there's trust that we can fail. There's trust that we can be wrong. There's trust that we can try stuff that's not gonna work and then we'll try something else. There's trust that we will be in hard patches where we can't figure something out, but we will get through it. And that's an extraordinary thing to have that kind of trust with somebody. And you know, to be to be operating from a place of real joy in each other's company and joy in, in the in the work that gets done is a very special thing. You know, I, I don't think either of us take that for granted ever. Yeah, you know, on both of you, when I see that, I, mean, I don't mean to sound hyperbolic, but when I see that you're attached to something. I really, it just seems to resonate with me. Like Rachel getting married is such a masterpiece. And Incredible. Alex, all of your work, like back on the fringe days and alias and now the Star Trek work, I'm so grateful that you're doing this show. It's, it means a lot to me, my whole family, we watch it together. And uh, I'm, look, I don't know where you're taking us. It's probably going to be somewhere really bonkers, but I think it's going to mean a lot. And hopefully there'll be some tears and some laughter. But I want to thank you for your time today. Good luck. I hope to see you on the Emmys red carpet. Thank um, you thank so you much. Own. This thank was lovely. Much. Thank you.